for watching King Kong, Top 8, Leo, Spargo, Grand Finals. So just to wrap up, how we got here is Leo beat Spargo in winner's finals. I don't remember the game count. I want to say it was game five, a little bit of a butt clencher. Spargo had to beat, I believe, Bloom in loser's finals. So Bloom got third and we're here. It was winner's semifinals, correct. You're right. So Spargo had to beat like a lot of people. I don't even, I don't remember. It was, it was a bunch of dudes. Neo was in there, the Corrin player. He had to beat Raflo. Yeah, there we, it's, it's all coming together. These guys play all the time. It's gonna be a lot of set play, a lot of things that like like look look like very obvious mistakes. One thing that I noticed when I was watching this live, that maybe you guys could point, you guys could probably see this very easily just by watching, but they get away with a lot of like kind of autopiloty rolls and spot dodges from both sides. To be honest, I think just the way that these two play can kind of be compared to Light and I because they play so often where you're more focused on punishing what they want to do as opposed to their like responses, if that makes sense. You want to like, if you want to beat someone way more convincingly, you never let them get started. You never let them get any momentum and you never let them feel comfortable. That doesn't really involve exploiting their defensive habits like rolls and spot dodges and the such. So just something to keep in mind. Lots of rolls, lots of spot dodges. Things that if they just like pause for one second and like hunted for and looked for, they would easily punish. Leo is catching lots of rolls, but he also does a lot himself too. Again, ones that like Swargo just don't really catch. Leo also did almost exclusively normal getup. I say as he does jump getup. It's because I started paying attention. Ooh, that's unfortunate. That's weird. It hit his shield on the way up, but not on the way down. That well. It's weird, but it makes sense. So, for people who do not know, your shield and your hurt box are two different things. Can I get like a better still frame to show you? I guess this is the best I can do, but like Joker's hurt box is here and the shield is out here. So he hits the shield. It's easy to assume that on the way down, he's gonna hit you. But there is that like small like space between your hurt box and your shield poking outward that some characters have. <clears throat> that, make react, uh, that make situations like that a little awkward to navigate. And because of this whole situation, now he's at like 60. Okay, that was really weird. What, what happened? So, this dash tag is risky, right? Because why wouldn't Spargo land with forward air here? Mashing his cloud with limit while you're at kill percent? That's just a W, everyone does that. But Leo calls him out with a dash tag. Smash ultimates in beta so the dash tag doesn't connect and this dude is mashing side B on landing. That's a little weird. <clears throat> I don't understand why Spargo would side B to the left there. Maybe he was trying to call out Leo for like not choosing a button. Maybe he just wanted to spend it because he was running out. A lot of weird stuff. A Mickey Mouse interaction, sure, yeah. So before we go into super like analyzing the interactions i want to talk a little bit about the matchup too joker wins this matchup two reasons <clears throat> one thing that cloud struggles with is getting gimped you don't see spargo get gimped a lot because he's really good at recovering a lot of the sets that spargo does end up losing is because he gets gimped or you know dies early for whatever reason or another and another thing that sucks in this matchup for cloud is the fact that uh joker's short hop gun functions somewhat like an anti-air so i'll try to pick out a specific time but just visualize cloud doing short hop back air you have to you have to set up there's a bit of setup time you have to go in the air and you have to start falling before you start back airing joker could do a rising gun and that'll intercept that that just makes playing your like your just normal go-to neutral pretty hard to execute when you start getting shot up <clears throat> cloud mid no he is not mid I saw the, the, the Japanese players. It was Zach Ray and I think what, Mia or Akola. I don't remember. And they like compared top 10 lists. I think they had Cloud in there. That's crazy. Cloud is not top 10. I don't even know if Cloud is top tier. These dudes are rolling. It's a bakery. Another button that Cloud likes to play neutral with is landing forward air. Short hop gun beats landing forward air. Just Cloud relies a lot on his movement to harass his opponent, and Joker's gun does a really good job at stuffing movement, just because it has such like a large range where it like, kind of like makes your character flinch. It's really annoying. 
if you're not ready for it and you're not used to fighting Joker and like reacting to when Gun makes you flinch. Leo looking for some 4-air. Okay, there's no way. Leo has been like fishing for exclusively 4-air 1 for like 30 seconds straight. Look at this. Let's see when it starts. Alright, 4-air 1 fishing starts at here at 5.39. Alright, still 4-air 1-ing. Okay, still, still looking for it. Still looking for it. Oh, he gets hit by it. All right, back to Fort Air One fishing. <laughs> Can we get another Fort Air One? Can we get another Fort Air One? Huh? All right, we're playing a little bit more neutral now. But he fished for it for like ten seconds straight. Now that he's got Arsene, he can look for other kill options. But my man, he tried going it for it again. This is why Spargo is winning this game is because he's fishing way too hard. Nice. Good to not back air there. There's no way he makes it back because of that air dodge. Damn, the latest hits of that down tilt makes it easier to combo with that. Oh, Leo actually has down gun out of shield confirms? Or he actually, not confirms, he actually does the down gun out of shield now. He's not too slow. I remember when he first started implementing that, he just wasn't hitting the down gun part. This dude wants him dead, holy. Spargo's smart by holding on to ledge there. Just chilling at ledge while Joker has Arsene is such a good option. He doesn't really have any amazing tools that hit below ledge, or like ledge hang. He's got down air, but that has setup time. Upsettiness with Spargo in the camera. Dash attack, what the? Dash attack here? This hits? Okay, so he started a down air. Why did it take so many frames for it to go to here? This is crazy. Cloud is broken. How did this not hit? Th there's clearly some frames missing that the YouTube video doesn't have. But what's even crazier is the fact that this dash tag even hits. Well, no, his hand is out there. Being able to utilize the yeah, is good. already does so much for Cloud. Hello, guys, I'm here. Oh, for God. Uh, let's see. This is one thing that I've talked about too, but this is such an important part of disadvantage at top level. A lot of players like to land like in this area, right where my mouse is over here. Or like this is where they like to descend, right? When they're coming down from a juggle because there are so many options that you as the juggler, in this case Cloud, have to take into uh, account. It's uh, first of all, they can air dodge to the platform, they can land down, or they can just fade back towards platform. Or in some cases they have their double jump. Now, <clears throat> accompanying some or at least all of these options, you have to consider fast wall timing, if they're gonna air dodge or not. Uh, if they can footstool you, they can phantom footstool you. I don't know if I said they can attack as well. My mouse speed's slow. No, I'm, see, I'm intentionally making it slow, okay? Uh, stop, you're making me self-conscious. It's a lot to consider, is what I'm saying. So, a lot of times where you see top players, like, when they're getting out of juggle situations, they tend to just like linger around this area and Sometimes they'll just throw out a random option. Spargo is fishing for the kill, so naturally he's gonna start throwing out kill options like back air over here or up smash over here because those are the only two that'll kill at this point. Up air won't kill. He air dodges to the platform, right? Four tilt would have killed most likely if it hit there. And then <clears throat> flash forward a couple frames, right? So he gets up air, we're in disadvantage. He immediately burns his double jump because you know Spargo jumps, he feigns like he's going to call him out for like pressing a button or air dodging, right? If he air dodges here, Spargo just up airs and then reacts to the air dodge drift and then dash attacks and probably kills him or just up smash, whatever. <laughs> so there you go. You see Leo drifting to the left of this platform already. I'm gonna slowly go through the frame so you can just see that he's like positioning himself, right? And Spargo wisely positions himself under the platform. It's, he's the safest. He won't get reversaled here. You know, he can react if he's going to get reversaled. If say Leo wanted to like come down with like a back air, which would be scary by the way, he could get up smash or up aired. But he chooses to go under the platform and try to react to what Leo is doing. Cause remember last time he air dodged to the platform. It's like sort of safe, but not really. If he reacted to that, he could have gotten up smash and lost. So Spargo chose to wait. And Leo, instead of air dodging to the platform this time, he came down with a down air. top level disadvantage, which is why you see very, very often top players tend to live at that like 160 to 200% range it's because you keep reintroducing that situation and just choosing something totally random. 
<laughs> that you don't think will get you killed. And you're fine. Obviously, there's more to it, right? Because like I said, if back air is the only option that'll kill you, don't choose the one where you get back aired. It's simple. Simple, really. Look at the spot dodges. It's got some spot dodge sallies in this, this uh, grand finals. Sheesh. See? Look. In the exact same situation. Leo falls. He drifts left towards this corner that I'm talking about. Spargo just calls him out. Up smash. What are you doing? I think in the last two times they've been in that situation, Leo did a fast fall. So he had the timing. The option was just a guess. It's all a guess, but he was confident on the first one, and he was right. Nice. Nice. Leo's been trying to do that a lot. Trying to get away with Rebel's Guard. Very easy to go for when you, know, you got Cloud trying to back air eight different options at once. It was a wise, high up B, intercepting the grounded up gun. That is such a scary gamble to do as Leo. So, both players had no idea if this Nair would be a true combo. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on how stale the back air is, rage, what percent the opponent's at. So, both of you say, F it. One of you commits to air dodge, the other one nairs. However, what Spargo could have done Instead of committing to the second air, he wasn't sure what combo, right? Because positionally, that air would set him up really well. He could have just drifted to the right and landed in this corner and gotten like a landed for landing forward air back air or like back air Leo back off stage. Like, that's a pretty, pretty big gamble from Leo to just do an air dodge in like that, but it worked out. And being off stage with Arsene, awful. Terrible feeling, terrible. I looked away at the funny part. Okay, you said it was stock one, I'll go back. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, that should never play out like that. He just let go of ledging that hit for it. That disadvantage thing I was talking about too, Tweak does that a lot. Ooh, that was smooth. From Leo over here, he goes like under this back air. And he positions the pivot grab perfectly. Tight timing. I hate when that happens. You ledge trump somebody and you get punished for it. There you go. Finally again. I will try to dissect this game. So how did we end up here? I think it's because he went for a ledge trump here to try and go for a kill. Would have been a nice early lead for him. Oh. Leo was the one who went for a game. He got up aired for it. So he got his jump get up caught. He must have jumped there. Oh no, he didn't jump there. He saved it like a wise cloud player. So he has to jump. He has to up B here. So it's it's kind of a 50-50 because Spargo could have delayed this up B here a little bit. Leo chose to call out that he would up B early. It's a simple down gun and down B. Three back airs. Wow. It's another thing that was really smart from Leo. Anticipating the high up B like that. I mean, the reason you'd think, right? Because because Leo is so far away, why would he do an up B early? You really only do that if you think someone's gonna like try to intercept your up B. But if he goes to that distance where like Cloud's up B will snap ledge, then he uh, runs the risk of getting hit by a down gun. If that jab hit, it probably would have killed too. Because I'm talking about with the matchup. You really got to try hard to not get gimped. Damn, you know Spargo is scared when he's not back airing ledge. Or like timing a forward tilt or trying to dash attack. The get ups. Being able to air to air cloud, so nice. It, it just, it makes him play so much. Like it, it forces cloud to actually respect and consider your options. He lost limit. Did he drop off and try to double jump? Okay. He probably thought Leo was gonna just hold shield there. 
and he could like get a grab. I just killed him. Holy shit, this dude was standing at the stairs. <laughs> He's ready to go hug Leo. <laughs> Look at him running. That <laughs> run is sick. Sorry, this run is killer. I fuck with this guy. He waddled like the Mies and Wee Bowling. <laughs> That's his new coach. I didn't know he had a coach. He was happier than Leo himself. I understand. I understand being happy as a coach there. It's cool seeing like, like in in that way, like because Leo won, like both of your, both of your efforts have paid off essentially. Do I think Leo is really back in that top 10 area or did he just get a really good bracket? I think he's in the top 10 area. I mean, I he was 11 on the rankings. Like it's not like he was far off and you could argue he was in the top 10 rankings the whole time.